Hi, everybody. Welcome to Series 3, Episode 28, or Episode Consecutive 57 of the Hidden London Hangouts. This week, we are going to give you a nugget of amazing tube architecture, and we're going to explain what it's all about before we fling open the doors on Series 4 of our wonderful series. Uh, I don't do this alone. I've got three friends from the London Transport Museum to help us explain and laugh along the way through this mad year. First of all, Chris Nix from the Transport Museum. I'm thinking, I've got an image in my mind to start series four of the Hidden London Hangouts. There was a series on television years ago called um, Euro Trash. And I'm thinking what we could do, me and you could wear big fur coats and fling open <laughs> big gates on let's, series four at the beginning. Let's, what do you think? Do it. In the meantime, I was just thinking, well, hello, Sailor. Haven't we, uh, we ended up going rather nautical in our themes? Um, total, you, total anchors, anchor. I've realized Look at that. I've gone a little bit, bit, bit boaty too. Well, it's Boaty McBoatface. I am <laughs> loving the nautical, but nice. It's pretty lovely. Yeah, there you go. Total anchor. And uh, City Holloway, what do you think of uh, summertime in London? Well, um, I'd like it. Well, actually, you know, uh, the weather has been has been improving and it's been a lot better recently. So um, I'm happy about that. Just need to uh, seriously commit to trying to reach the same tan levels as you, really. Well, it's very <laughs> Good luck with that. Uh, and uh, Laura Hilton Brown. Do you ever go doing a weather forecast as well? I love the fact whenever you ask anybody about the weather, they almost turn into a meteorologist. They almost expect a weather map behind you. Do you know what? I love a little weather update. Um, <laughs> my parents live up in Yorkshire and we have regular daily weather updates with each other, you know, just to check out how, uh, how the country is doing. Um, and I did a little bit of costume change today because I thought if ever there was a T-shirt that went with the content, this would be it. Little kind of, you know, tease on what we're doing today, maybe. You're so right. You're so, she's so beautifully, fabulously coordinated. She's brilliant. Now, uh, summer's here, kids are off school, and um, King's Cross is an amazing area which has been developed hugely in recent years. The stations look amazing, both King's Cross and St Pancras. There's loads and loads of things going on around the um, sort of canal area as well. That looks stunning. And if you have a little wander up, you can even see the vestiges of York Road tube station. But in amongst all that that delightful architecture is a tunnel uh, that links you to the London Underground Station at King's Cross St Pancras. King's Cross Rainbow Tunnel is its affectionate term and we wanted to explain to you what it's all about. You can see from this picture it is absolutely beautiful. It's a feast Laura of colour to the eyes. It absolutely is. And it just makes me think of obviously rainbows. Who doesn't love a rainbow? And kaleidoscope. What a lovely kind of, I don't know if people have been to the tunnel, but it's a really lovely, gentle movement through the colour spectrum. And I just think it's utterly charming. I really like it. And there aren't many um, tunnels like this, Chris, on the, the network, are there? That they're just, they get you somewhere, but they're, they're just so beautiful in the route. Well, it, it's a really rather nice tunnel because it, it links you in to uh, the, the underground and into the HS1 tunnel into the mainline station and if you ever go there on a rainy day it's really handy because it's an extra layer of cover that helps get you a bit further uh, further up towards uh, Granary Square but it's in the cold drop yards but it, it's also quite a beautifully finished uh, tunnel just look at the the grills over the the ceiling there echoed by those carefully inlaid floor tiles um, and then the obvious main event being the uh, the light panels. I always think to myself at the moment, sorry to be so churlish to the world of uh, COVID, but all this separation tape and everything else that we have to put down these days, it kind of detracts from what the architects were trying to do, weren't they? Because those floors, when they don't have that tape, there is just something wonderful. Is it backgammon? It's like a backgammon. It is. Tape. It is. It's just like a backgammon board. Yeah, yeah. How did we not think of that before, City? You and I. I know. Backgammon, you don't play a game down there with massive. Yeah, kicks. these are the proper little backgammon <laughs> champions. Can you imagine going down there kicking the discs along the floor. <laughs> be so much fun but I, I always strikes me as just this wonderful kaleidoscope of color whenever you go down there Sid just talk to us about the ex the explanation of where, how this came about because it is so lovely yeah so you know as you said before that whole area has been kind of been under re regeneration for the last decade or so and uh, particularly with one um, <clears throat> got once once in Pancras Square 
and Granary Square and all that stuff that's just sort of north of King's Cross and St Pancras. Um, when they were regenerating and building everything up there, they decided to put this in in order to connect you, you know, in, in an easy fashion to the underground station. And I just love the fact that instead of making it just a bland old subway, they decided to make it an, an art piece. And so it's actually one of the longest LED light walls in Europe. It's 90 meters long. It's got 190 vertical panels, which are, are filled with these LED lights that are capable of kind of the full color spectrum plus a full white spectrum. So it's not always actually a, a rainbow. Sometimes it can be just like different pastel colors. And it's supposed to give you this sense of sort of serenity as you're making your way into the underground and give you sort of a sense of, uh, uh, of peace and calm, which with the rainbow thing, I feel like it does do that. I can imagine if it, if it was filled with just pastels sometimes, that would that would make it even more kind of relaxing because it's just that those colors really hit you in a in a nice chill way. And uh, it was designed by Spears and Major, and the lighting was done by the Light Lab. And I just think it's one of those places on the underground which um, you don't expect. You sort of turn the corner, it's really funny because you, you come out of the underground at King's Cross and you turn sort of to the left and you walk up this uh, sort of slight corridor which just looks like any other in the underground and then you have to turn a right and suddenly you're just hit with this explosion of colour and it's just you don't expect it and that's what's brilliant about it. I agree. And it, I think I mentioned in a previous episode, we were talking about your home uh, land city, that I wasn't a big fan of grey until I went to Iceland and I suddenly realised how beautiful grey as a colour could be. And the thing I love about that tunnel is that the, the various colours that you walk down, you walk past have an effect on my mood. So red and yellow and blue and green, they do something to me. I don't know. Laura, you're incredibly sensitive about colours. Does the same thing happen to you? Does it have that effect on you? I love that Justice City was talking about how it's supposed to be lovely and calm and serene. I'm like, disco! Yes, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. the pastel colours, 100%, I think that would be uh, much more calming. But the, the brighter colours for me just, it, it kind of, it, it makes me happy and excited and a bit kind of like giddy, probably, hence the disco t-shirt. Um, but the more, the paler colours absolutely would kind of make me feel a little bit calmer. Um, and I just I just think the design is really clever that it's so curvy and seamless and it's quite a long tunnel like Siddy said you've got 90 meters I think it was once used as a catwalk in the London fashion show as well which gives yeah. you an idea of that, that kind of distance that, that can be traveled um, and I just I love how um, it's yeah it's transformed what could be quite a long dreary walk between uh, stations um, on your, you know part of your journey um, into a much more kind of artistic um, you know the aesthetics make you then feel something like there's a, a transition of emotions as well um, and that's probably some people might be like that's a bit excessive for a tunnel um, but for me I think when you see something and it makes you feel something then the, the nail has been hit on the head so to speak it's, it's done its job it's made that section so much more enjoyable and then just again enhanced your journey we always talk about this don't we that these little treats of design enhance your journey and i think it's really clever and beautiful as well and you know disco party it's lovely mm -hmm. just imagine london fashion week there's no way i'd want to be walking down there in my winkle pickers i can tell you that would be a right <laughs> turn off um but interestingly you know when I lived outside London I used to come into King's Cross on the train and the thing that used to strike me was the fact that I was living in rural Hertfordshire and so suddenly you arrive in London and the energy hits you of a city and you suddenly realize people are walking at pace off the platform and they get down on the tube and everything else and so to me that tunnel if it was pastel colors would almost be the wrong type of mood to convey I love the energy and the vividness of those primary colors and I, I think it's absolutely beautiful and Chris we've actually got the walkthrough because we we asked City to go and do this for us, didn't we? And, and she's done an, an amazing job at capturing the moment for us. Yeah, so, um, and here we go. So let's uh, let's walk and talk, as they say. You know, I was lucky because I had to dash there after um, a full day's work yesterday. And I was lucky that I got there about 7 p.m. But the tunnel actually closes to the public at 8 p.m., so, which I hadn't checked previously so I was lucky in that um, I got there in time. 
Doesn't it and just, the fact that it was pouring down with rain that you were yeah, filming chucking down. The look, at that, look at those colours changing. There is something it does to your mind. Mm. I really think colour is so incredibly powerful on the mind, especially now when probably we're all sort of a little bit more mentally frail. Colour is so um, beneficial because it kind of stretches your brain as you see the colours. Would you yeah. agree with this, Laura? Am I talking gibberish? No, do you know what? I'm, I'm with you 100%. And I think, um, I believe that it's backlit so that there are no shadows as well. So you get that lovely, just clear pop of the colours rather than any shadows being created as well, which again is, is all down to really clever design work. Do you know, it could be a great place. You could almost imagine seeing that at an airport, like on a travelator going down towards the departure gate. I could almost imagine those colours coming at you to remind you of the fact you're going somewhere exciting on your holiday. I, th I think one of the things as well about this is that we, we've all walked down you know, dingy subway, subway tunnels that uh, usually don't smell very nice. Uh, but this is a complete contrast. Isn't it? It's full of life and, and colour and energy. So it, it really is a great way to turn what could have been a very dull, functional tunnel. Into yeah. Something that actually yeah, it's is. a good word, Chris. Energy. It's got, it's got a lovely energy feel to it. I like that. Absolutely beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And there you go, you emerge into the summer sunshine <laughs> of London. <laughs> the dull, dreary land absolutely of London. Absolutely glorious. And Great sorry, just remind me of the reason I'm coming back. Uh, no. Well, uh, actually on Monday, it's, you know, it's been, you know, it's going to be very warm. It's going to be all right. Diddy, I'm holding you to this. I'm going with Diddy's weather forecast. There'll be hell to pay if I get back and it's raining, I can tell you. I am a grouch <laughs> when I get to airports and it's wet. Uh, especially when, you know, another COVID test. Could you do this? Could you do that? Could you do the other? Uh, it's all good. Um, thank you. Guys we, for... we need the weather to be changeable. The number of times this show has needed to throw to the weather really quite badly to change this. <laughs> <laughs> Where is Thomas Schaffernacker when you... <laughs> uh, he might be the very worst person to be thrown to at the moment. But anyway, <laughs> Steve, thank you so much as always. A few notes, queries and questions uh, from previous episodes, you know, uh, before last week we did uh, Green Park and that amazing mosaic tunnel and before that we had two episodes on Knightsbridge and we got some lovely feedback thank you so much we're ever so grateful uh, we will continue to do this while you continue to watch it's as simple as that and our Patreons who uh, give so generously to the museum we can't thank you enough for your generosity and kindness and um, con a constant companionship actually thank you. Uh, Train Spotting says a uh, brilliant series I can't wait to return to London how about an episode about South Kensington uh, the classic Leslie Green facade, the glass fronted uh, covered arcade, the tunnel to the museums, not to mention the original wrought iron sign proclaiming the Metropolitan and District Railway for good measure, throwing the disused platform on the district and circle line. Train spotting. Thank you for your offering. Uh, Christopher, what do you reckon? That's not a bad idea, is it? Yeah, very interesting one. Yeah. The only uh, issue uh, is, of course, that uh, the, the Piccadilly line at South Kensington is closed until April next year. Um, maybe not to us. Might oh, be the ideal we might get a sneaky thing. Mm. And um, someone said to me the other day, I can't believe that the Northern Line's going to be shut for such a long period of time, or part of it anyway, uh, next year. And I said, there's good work going on. We might still get access. What do you reckon, Chris? Yeah, well, yeah. And I think given how much our, uh, our fans seem to like a, a look underneath the escalator at Knightsbridge uh, the other week, I think uh, a look at an escalator being rebuilt might uh, might have some appeal. So yeah, maybe we should go and do South Ken while it's in bits. Absolutely, and and don't forget as well that you know we weren't around when Angel uh, was being refurbished and rebuilt and everything else. But similar, something is happening at Bank Station, so we could actually explain to you what's happening to make Bank so much bigger and so much more accessible. So we've got loads of things to come. As I say, Series Four is going to be a belter. We've got some wonderful ideas for programs to bring to you and ideas to bring you. Um, David Ham, well, this is a perennial, isn't it? Uh, he says, back in the 80s, I used to regularly walk up the steps at Elephant and Castle until I found it was quicker to walk from Waterloo when the lifts were being refurbished. I felt like a 150 storey building. There's something about walking up steps at tube stations, isn't there? It really isn't good for the soul. Yeah. <laughs> I, can only agree. I can only agree. I had to do the steps at Clapham South Deep Level Shelter five times in the space of two hours yesterday. That was that was more than enough. I bet your rallies are bulging, aren't they? <laughs> oh God! I guess it's just because you're sort of in a rush. You want to just get out as quickly as possible, so it just feels longer. I I think than 
a normal stick. Also, I mean, there's not many places where you're actually climbing up eight to ten floors of of steps. No, not by choice. Put no. Absolutely not. Um, that's series three, done and dusted, team. Sids, it's been quite a roller coaster ride, hasn't it? My God, we've done so much. I feel like I, oh God. It's been a fantastic series. We've gone through all of winter, from it being cold, from it being warm. We've been to loads of different sites. We've discovered loads of places, which I had an inkling there might be something there, but had never imagined there'd be as much as there as we found. So thank you everyone for uh, sticking with us and watching us. We are chuffed to bits. And Laura, we've met some amazing people along the way on these trips as well, haven't we? People who've completely opened our eyes as people who perhaps know a little more than everybody else. But even so, we're still learning, aren't we? We absolutely are. And I think you're right. We've had such amazing collaborations with so many sites that we've been to. And they've absolutely made our day, haven't they? And they've opened that extra door or snuck us in to see some kind of lift uh, movement. And I just think... We're so we're so lucky and thank you everyone for watching. But I did have a moment a minute ago. Honestly, what are you guys doing to me? The beginning of season one, Chris saying we might be able to see a lift being installed would not have roused any kind of emotion in me whatsoever. And when he said it, then I was like, oh, that's quite exciting, isn't it? What's happened to me? <laughs> what are you Still doing? <laughs> amazing in every way. You've just broadened your horizons to vertical <laughs> and, and horizontal movement. It's great. Um, and Chris, I suppose the thing that probably means the most to us out of all of this is that we've heard from the people who are enjoying this, you, you, um, to say how much it's meant to you to get through three lockdowns. And I think that's probably meant so much to us, hasn't it, as well? I was just thinking the same thing as, as Laura was saying that. I think there's quite a lot of people at home going, oh, yeah, I didn't used to think about these things either. Uh, but now I do. And, yeah, I mean, I, I really hope we've helped carry people through and out of lockdown um, and given you some mental freedom, at least, uh, during that period. Uh, and the good news is we're intended to carry on and go into even more places that, well, you can't get to even in normal times. Uh, and show you things that you might just walk past without noticing uh, as you start to go out and about more. So, yeah, it, it's been been lovely. It's been a real privilege to be able to do that. And it's been so great to hear back from our viewers as to what they like, what they'd like to see more of. So please carry on doing that. We've carried each other through the last three lockdowns and we hope we've hopefully thrown a rope to you as well to get you through it as well and um, we're ever so grateful for you watching us we're ever so grateful for the fact that you appreciate the fact you come into our lives every week we're really really delighted that we can share those things with you um i'm here in portugal i am having to fly home because frankly you can't run away forever and uh, i am back very very soon indeed visiting some amazing places with these wonderful human beings and um so we look forward to taking you there series four is going to be wonderful uh, it starts next week and uh, we're cracking right on because frankly why would we stop when we're still having so much fun uh, if you want to find out what we're up to instagram is a great place to start alex grundon chris nick city holloway hidden london law and at lt museum also on youtube you found us you love us because you like us keep liking those buttons like 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 comment, uh, subscribe, and also ask the questions that you want to know the answers to, and suggest some other ideas for our Hidden London Hangouts too. Series four is gonna be a belter. Please join us. Have yourself a great day and stay safe. And now we're off to the pedestrian tunnel at King's Cross. Uh, City and I to play backgammon, you and Laura to do a flash mob disco. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs>